Time to talk some Gamecock football this spring. Welcome back into the post-game show alongside Elijah Campbell. I'm Jay Phillips. Appreciate you being with us, and let's jump right in. Always fun to talk with the Gamecock offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach. He is Dowell Loggins back on the program. How are you, sir? Halfway through spring, you uh, you, you used to it now, year two? Yeah, I'm, well, I don't know if you ever get used to it, but we're excited about uh, the guys that we have, and it's been a uh, – it's been a fun spring so far. We got a long way to go, but uh, it's been a good six days. You know, whether it was by design or not, and let's face it, some of it was not, you are basically overseeing a lot of new faces on your staff. Forget about the player turnover, Dow. You, you've got a lot of guys that, that, you know, with Sean and Markwell coming in and Mike Furry now. Uh, what, yep. What's that dynamic like? All these guys know what they're doing. And in Sean and Mike, you've got guys that just left as head coaches, so they certainly know what's up. But what's that been like for you? Well, it, you know, it's the hard part is the timing of how things have happened you know the especially with sean and mike uh, we we're in the process of building a chemistry as a coaching staff and um i've really enjoyed them and that's that's the great part is you got these guys you you can just tell they're football guys and you trust them because they've got good football knowledge obviously when guys have been head coaches they they see the big picture they, they see things but uh, I'm really excited about the room. We're still learning a lot about each other because we are behind just for the dynamic, the how things sorted out the way they did. I really am glad that they did sort out the way they did because uh, I'm I'm really excited about these guys. They're going to help us. They're going to help our players. They're going to help us schematically from a recruiting standpoint, from an evaluation standpoint. How they coach their guys are all guys that if coached, they have an edge to them um, that I think we needed. Um, offensively, we just needed guys in here that have a, a harder edge and are going to be very demanding and, and coach these guys really hard. And I think the players see that it's uh, – they see the commitment that these guys have, the passion for football, and not to mention the knowledge that they have of, for, of the game as well. Dal, and then, of course, the quarterback position. I want to get into that real quick. You know, uh, this uh, this time this year looking a lot different than this time last year, especially when it comes to the skill sets of Lenoris and, and Robbie as compared to Spencer Rattler. But what's it kind of been like here these last few weeks in practice, kind of building an offense around quarterbacks with different skill sets than what you had to start off with last year? Yeah, you know, it, uh, there's a major difference just in the room, you know, just from when we started Last year, the roles were almost defined by experience, play time. You're you're got one of the best college football players in the country, uh, which yeah, which I love right now because the rest of the NFL is and the rest of the world is seeing like how 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 his stock is rising and how good Spencer really was, and uh, the credit he deserves for the two years and all the good stuff he did here for this program. But it, we knew Spencer was the guy, and we you know we we're trying to figure out who's the two and who's the three and where does it fit in? And it's easier to accept roles. And now you come in here and you've got Lenoris who was here. You brought in um, Robbie Ashford. You've got Davis Bevel. You've got Luke Doty. You bring in the young kid, Dante Reno. And now it's competition. So last year when people walked in the room, wherever seventh set, we all followed the guys all followed his lead. Um, They watched how he moved. They watched his cadence. I can sit back and say, hey, our guys, guys, look, that Spencer Rattler is our starter. So now our job is to – we got to sound the same. Our snap count has to sound like Spencer's. So you got to listen to Spencer. All right, so now we're going to mimic this so it's easy on the offensive line so all cadences um, sound the same. Well, now you come in and you got five guys competing for jobs, and it's different for the offensive line because we are rotating. Every one of these guys except for Dante Reno is taking reps with the ones. And Don, we've given Dante uh, – one series of the ones at seven on seven, but no team stuff. And it, so it's different for everyone. It's different from the room. You go from a room that was extremely comfortable in their in their role last year to now we're competing um, with no depth chart. So there's just a, a tension, a healthy tension in the room of the competition creates. It brings out the best in everyone. Sometimes it brings out the worst in people. And But I can see the room after six practices kind of settling down versus – Everyone's eyeballing everyone. Everyone's, you know, comparing themselves to the other one. They're watching every throw that every guy makes because in competition, that's what happens versus like awing at Spencer Allen. Now it's like you're, you're sizing the next guy up and um, they're starting to get comfortable with each other, comfortable with one another in the room. And um, you get to the point where you start, you start pulling for each other still, even in a competition 
which is it's just healthy and it makes everyone better. So, you know, it's been a, it's been fun that way. It's been fun to watch that dynamic, how it's starting to evolve, and um, even the room. You know, it takes a time. Like the quarterback room is a special room, and we don't let a lot of people come into our quarterback room because it is sacred. It's every decision we make is criticized. It's it's evaluated. Um, it's assessed. Like all those things. And so now it's just getting to the point where they're all, they're all starting to open up, communicate with each other. Hey, what'd you see on that play? And it's uh, it's cool how the quarterback rooms work that way. Talking to Dow Loggins, Gamecock offensive coordinator and quarterback coach. Uh, and let's let's stay with kind of. I want to piggyback off of what you just gave us there, Dow. Uh, coach uh, Beamer yesterday was asked about what he wanted to see from the quarterbacks in y'all scrimmage coming up this weekend. He asked if they were going to be live. Uh, you don't have to necessarily answer that second part, but you are there. You just mentioned it. The room. You are their quarterback coach, and you run this offense. So take us more in depth in Dow Loggins' mind about what he is most maybe anxious about and excited about when it comes to Saturday. Day scrimmage yeah well, I, I the guys know this uh the my very first job ever was with the dallas cowboys and bill parcells was our head coach and i heard him tell the quarterbacks hey we're gonna play whoever gets the team in the end zone the most like it may look different it may be ugly it may you may throw a touchdown pass that's end over and wobbling the bottom line is you were judged on getting the team into the end zone can you make the people around you better can you make this offer this operation function at a higher level? Uh, can you make these plays come to life? So they're judged on all of those things, and that's like when you start playing seven on seven, is very unrealistic to football. It is like, and it's become AAU basketball and all. We're all that's the big thing this summer. Like until you put the ball down and it's a, it's a game. It's eleven on eleven. Like it's hard to evaluate these guys. So, like you 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 pay attention to little. What makes college different than the NFL is there's no preseason. So now there's, there are going to be scrimmages at some point that are live. There are there will be times between now and training camp that happens. And every day is an interview, and they know right now the way to move up the depth chart is get the team in the end zone. And one of the ways to get in the end zone, especially with the quarterbacks, as you know, is uh, uh, your wide receiving core. And I think this is probably the most interesting unit on the team right now in terms of having a bunch of guys with different backgrounds, a lot of transfer players coming in here uh, with a lot of unique experiences. But which which of these veteran players that are going to be new faces in this wide receiving group that has a lot to replace from, you know, Xavier leaving uh, is really standing out to you? Well, you know, this time last year, no one was asking me about X. No one. Not one person was like, hey, man, this is a get guy. Uh, but now I've gotten 14 calls today from NFL scouts and general managers <laughs> and teams wanting to talk about him now. So, so it's awesome about football because it's not always the guy you think that's going to show up and do special things for you, and there's opportunity. Uh, we did bring in some veterans. We also have some guys that we recruited. Um, <clears throat> they're rotating the same way. We don't – we have – and this depth chart is not set. We've got – you know, Gage obviously is new. Jared Brown's new. Um, there's a bunch of players that I could start naming. I'll forget someone or Amari. Like, but there's also a lot of returning players that are going to be given opportunities as well. So, well, I mean, I'm excited about what the room is going to look like, how it's going to take shape. There's a, there's a, we got a long way to go in that room. We're still trying to figure out skill sets and figure out um, who does what well, what their strengths are, how we can maximize their strengths how we can minimize their weaknesses. Uh, just the same, same, same way we handled uh, X and those guys last year. So there's competition. Uh, we Obviously, Harbor's not here right now because he's in track, but he's around and he's paying attention. He's getting mental reps and doing those things. So like I said, there's a long way to go. I'm excited about um, the the growth that has happened. That Coach Furry's already made these guys better. These guys have caught so many, so many passes on the jug machine and and all these other things, but you got to go do it now in live, live situations and game settings and, and the situation. So I'm, I'm excited to watch how this thing unfolds. And we're, we're a long way away from setting a depth chart, or, and we get, well, there's a lot of room for improvement. Dow, last thing for you. You got a couple of running backs. You, you knew Rocket Sanders wasn't going to be with you this spring, and now Juju's gone down. It does give the newer guys an opportunity, including a lot of people excited about what Attaway can do for you. What What is that part of the offense looking like in terms of not having all your personnel? Well, the the good thing for me is I, I had two years with Rocket, um, so he's a player that I know extremely well. I know the character he has. I know the SEC production he's put on tape. Um, he's a guy that's played a lot of football. 
And that, like, look, when we had Darren McFadden when I was the Arkansas the player, Darren didn't play. He didn't. We didn't touch him in spring. We didn't touch him or Felix. Like, they, we it was hey, get him to August, get him to August, and they'll be fine. Um, so Rock is working really hard to get to get healthy, and our Oscar's guys played as well. And when you're bringing guys in um, that have played, the good thing is they have tape. And even we told we tell our young guys like, hey, you know, there's guys that show up, and it's like, do you have, you, we don't have a depth chart, but someone has to go out there first. So when we put someone out there first, and we had to you have to explain this to your young people is, hey, you know why he's going out there first, and because he's got tape. So I know exactly what he is. We're gonna find out what you are. There is no depth chart, um, you know. So guys like Oscar, who is brand new but's playing really good in pass protection. He's done a great job. He's a physical player. He's got good size. Um, you know, obviously DJ was here last year. To Warren Howes, a, a guy that's got a ton of upside that we're excited about, great size. When when you walk him you, and you see him for the first time, you're like, that's what it should look like. He's talking about a guy that's six foot one, two, uh, 210, 212 in that range. Matt, and Matthew Fuller's not here yet, who we're also has got great speed. We're excited about getting him here uh, in June. So, you know, we're, we've got a, we've got a, a, de- a depth chart of running backs. With Rocket not being not practicing right now, not being available, what an awesome opportunity for Oscar Attaway, Jordan Howell, DJ Braswell, and some of these other guys to get more reps than Bradley Dunn and um, and figure out, you know, hey, let them give them an opportunity to to compete and show us what they can do as well. Coach, great stuff. We appreciate you, and uh, I promise you, we'll do it again here real soon. Have fun this weekend with it.